My name is Darwin Brock, and I work as a cave and karst specialist. You weren't actually afraid somebody was going to steal that helmet, were you? Everybody knows Darwin. Somebody gave you a very notable name. Somebody did. My father first started surveying caves while he was working on his PhD at Purdue. We have the longest running longitudinal data set for any species anywhere in the world. And we've been able to achieve that by passing surveys through generations. First starting with my father and now to me. We have been surveying caves every two years to census the Indiana bat population. There's a number of different bats that are endangered. Indiana bats are one of those endangered species. There's only approximately 10 caves that hold about 95 or 98 percent of the species. One of those caves happens to be Jug Hole in Harrison County, Indiana, which during the last winter survey held approximately 25 percent of the population. We are doing something called harp trapping. You go out to the mouth of a cave and you set up a trap. All along it, you have fishing line that is pulled tight enough that when the bats fly into it, they will not be harmed, but it will cause them to fall into a bag. We check their species, we age them, we sex them, uh, we check their reproductive status. We check for white nose scoring to see if they have any marks from white nose infection. The primary reason why the Indiana bat is endangered is due to a lack of habitat. So once you start conserving and protecting that habitat, you start allowing the species to be able to flourish. And so the work that we focus on really goes to figure out exactly what those caves are. What is the habitat that they need? You know, how can we work to conserve and protect that habitat for them? Bats are one of the most abundant mammals in the state, especially in forested areas. Indiana bats swarm over the countryside eating insects. $23 billion worth of beneficial agricultural impact on the insects they consume. One of the strategies TNC has employed is protecting the key caves across the state of Indiana, the really important places that are vital for survival, especially of Indiana bats. We also protect the forest around the caves because the forest is so important for their mating and feeding in the fall. By protecting those key points, we ensure that hundreds of thousands of bats have a safe overwintering habitat available in the state. People often think, well, we have a cave, we have bats. That's not the case. Out of the, say, 4,000 plus caves that exist in Indiana, Perhaps 10 of those are very significant in the entire state. So those few 10 are really critical to bat conservation. These sites are irreplaceable. These only exist in a handful of places. And so to protect an endangered species like this, we have to focus on these particular sites. If we didn't work to study them, there's no way that we would be able to protect them. You have to understand where they're living during the summertime, where they're living in the wintertime. What type of habitat do they like? What type of habitat do they thrive in? How are we as humans able to coexist with them and provide for that so that they are able to continue to exist? We have to do this because unexpected things happen. Everyone knows about white nose syndrome coming in and affecting bat populations. We didn't see that coming, but it's here. If we can protect the sites that they use now, we build up a population that's more resilient to those kinds of unexpected catastrophic events. So our work is building resilience into the future for these animals. To think of the loss of these species that lived in this forest for a millennia is a tragedy. They're struggling, and therefore we need to step up and and do what we can to protect them.